but let my heart be good soil open to the seed of your word lord let my heart be good soil where love can grow in pieces understood when my heart is hard break the stone away when my heart is cold warm it with the day when my heart is lost lead me on your way lord let my heart lord let my heart lord let my heart be good soil good morning friends i'm pastor kevin of faith lutheran church and it is a real pleasure to welcome you to our online worship service for sunday april 21st this is now the fourth Sunday of Easter, and as such, we have before us the image of the Good Shepherd who shows us how the risen Christ brings us to life. It's the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, one of mutual knowledge and love that gives the shepherd authority. The shepherd's willingness to lay down his life for the sheep shows his love. Our reading from 1 John illustrates what it means to lay down our lives for one another by the example of sharing our wealth with any sibling in need. During the Easter season, our worship begins as we gather at the font to give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me now in the prayer of the day. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Give us bread for the journey, give us bread. Give us bread for the journey, give us bread. When our legs are getting heavy and we're hanging down our heads, give us bread for the journey, give us bread. Guide our way as we travel, guide our way. Guide our way as we travel, guide our way. With so many roads before us, where to go is hard to say. one with each other make us one make us one with each other make us one all the walls we built around us may we learn to tear them down make us one with each other 
The first reading assigned for this fourth Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 5 to 12. And just for context, the previous day, Peter and John had been walking through the city when they came upon a man who was in need of healing. And they healed that man, and then that became the springboard for preaching in the city. And they were arrested then for their proclamation, and this happens the following day. Our reading then begins, The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this Sunday is very appropriately Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends our reading from the Psalms. The second reading assigned for this morning is from the first letter of John. We'll read from the third chapter, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, 
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My sermon this morning is very much indebted to Caroline Lewis's wonderful commentary on this text. In it, she did this marvelous thing as she reminded us that this text is a, a part of a larger reading. And in its context, it conveys to us a larger story. She reminds us that Jesus didn't just decide right out of the blue to start telling his friends that he's like a shepherd watching over his sheep. What had happened is that Jesus had given a man who had been born blind his sight. And since this man had been born blind, it was assumed that either he, while still in the womb, or his parents over the course of their lives must have sinned some horrible sin for God to have paid them out by inflicting this terrible punishment on the man. But Jesus well, he absolutely rejected that notion and he healed the man, even though it was a Sabbath day. And this got the scribes and the Pharisees all up in arms. So they tracked down the man who had received his sight and his parents, and they threatened to throw them all out of the synagogue if they publicly gave Jesus the credit for this miracle. And the man's parents, well, they hedged their bets by acknowledging that this man was their son who had been born blind, but distancing themselves from proclaiming Jesus as the channel of his healing. But when the man himself gave glory to Jesus, who he saw as God's power here on earth, he was cast out of the temple. So now Jesus and the Pharisees are having a very public argument regarding this incident, and Jesus has implied that the Pharisees and their ilk are spiritually blind because they cannot see the good that God is doing through him. And it's all getting quite heated. And remember that Jesus has already predicted that he will suffer and die, so there's a real sense of danger here. And this is where the whole conversation about sheep and shepherds pick up. And the deal is that Jesus is contrasting himself as the good shepherd with those who are not such good shepherds themselves, namely the Pharisees and the scribes. You see, according to Jesus, a good shepherd readily sees the dangers surrounding the sheep that they're entrusted with. And rather than shying away from that danger, a good shepherd stands firmly between the danger and the sheep. Simply because the good shepherd actually loves the sheep and the good shepherd is committed to take care of them. So the Pharisees and the scribes, they're being characterized by Jesus as hired hands and wolves and bandits that prey on the sheep. And Jesus is in that moment proving with his life that he is willing to square up against the dangers even by the action of debating this point with them in the first place. And the Pharisees, they're saying, oh, 
Sure, Jesus, you know, you've got these powers, but if you were really a good man, a good shepherd, you wouldn't be using your powers on the Sabbath, since doing that work on that day is a breaking of our interpretation of that law. But Jesus is saying, no, no, you've got it backwards. It's the sheep that come first. It's the good of the sheep that matters above all things. And the laws themselves are just set in place to help nurture the sheep and keep them from the harms of the world. So caring for them and curing them and restoring them to peace and health and, and community is the first order of business over and above the law itself. But that's an answer that the uh, Pharisees and the scribes were unwilling to accept. To them, the law was above all else, even the health and welfare of the people. And at the end of the day, some of the people were persuaded by Jesus that God's love and grace come first and that he was indeed the son of God, but others remained unconvinced and they went out spreading the rumor that he was either possessed by demons or one of the chief demons himself come to topple the law in the traditions and the faith of the people. And Jesus was savvy enough to know where this was heading. It was bound to lead to his own death at their hands for they would not stand idly by as the people claimed Jesus as their Lord and their own traditions and vocations were reduced to rubble around them. Jesus said that he had the power, that he was the good shepherd who would face the dangers and that no one could take his life from him, but he would willingly lay his life down for the sake of his sheep. And Rather curiously, he also said that he could lay it down of his own accord, but he also has the power to take it back up again. And the religious leaders, oh, they must have figured that he had that about half right. They figured that he might march blindly down the path of martyrdom to his own death with, with them cheering him on from the sidelines. But once he laid down his life, well, That'd be the end of that, for they'd seen others who laid down their lives only to fade into obscurity and be forgotten for all time. But that's where they seem to have miscalculated with regard to the good shepherd, for while the religious leaders would soon lead him down the path to his own death, at least in John, Jesus proclaimed that he was never in their control. He said that every step he took towards his own death for our sake was a step he took in the assurance that it was according to the divine will and within the divine plan, and that it would work towards the healing and restoration of all people. He was giving his life that the sheep might have theirs. He was bearing the assault of the false shepherds on their behalf. And even though that would lead to his own death, he trusted in the power of God, not to leave him in the clutches of death, but to raise him up for the good of all people. Raise him up to prove to all that even though the corrupt powers of this world might lead us to death, death does not have the final victory over us but God's power of life and love has the ultimate power over death itself. And thus, when God raised him up from the grave, what was defeated was not the eventuality of our earthly death in this realm, but what has been revealed through his resurrection is that death is not the end of the line for us. If God has overcome death for Christ Jesus our Lord, and if our Lord has promised that we will be together with him forever in God's kingdom, just on the other side of death, then our natural fear of death is abated. 
and we find hope and peace through Jesus' amazing willingness to face the threat of death on our account and endure the most horrible abuses that death might throw at us and enter fully into the jaws of death only to walk through the gateway of the grave and come back out fully alive back on this side of the grave that we might know deep in our hearts and minds that God has the power over death and God has the compassion to gather us all into God's eternal kingdom of, of peace on the other side of death. A kingdom where we no longer need to worry about the false shepherds and the wolves who dress in sheep's clothing and the predators who would misuse us and drain us of our wealth and our hope and our joy along the way as they so often have done in this life. But now we see in Christ Jesus what the Good Shepherd is, and we know that the Good Shepherd he once was is the Good Shepherd he always remains. And that's the good news for us today. And it is good news that we're called to share with all who are victims of false shepherds and greedy predators and hope-draining hypocrites in this life. For our calling is not just to sit back and await the day we join our Lord in the kingdom of eternal peace, but to be God's servants in this life, who give our all to help bring that kingdom to this earth, just as it is in heaven. May we rely on our Lord to teach us to be the best shepherds we can be for those who might look to us for nurture and encouragement. And may we turn their eyes to the one truly good shepherd, the one who came to lead us through our darkest valleys and into those green pastures and beside those still waters where we will all find our eternal rest through God's grace alone. Amen. Now our worship continues as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus has risen and triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and use such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, Protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. This morning we especially lift to you Ben, Inez, Phyllis, Cheryl, Mary, Maya, Bishop Satterley, Ron, Cecilia, Jacob, John, William, Brody, Kim, Jeanette, Jim, Denny, Don, Mike, Marianne, Myrtle, Ron and Sue, Christine, Nancy, Claudia, Chet, Roger, Dave, Janet, Mike, Brian, Phyllis, and all those who live or work at the Samaritas Lodge, woods, and terraces. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. We are one in the Spirit. We are one.
And now we join together in our offertory prayer. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Rejoicing in our risen Lord, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Now we receive the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Jesus, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus.